Welcome to Blood in the Snow Radio, where we give you the latest news and interviews with the best in Canadian genre cinema. Here are your hosts, Robert Bellamy and festival director Kelly Michael Stewart. And we are still here at uh, Blood in the Snow 2023, and uh, I have a gentleman here that has a proof of concept this year. Can I get you to introduce yourself? <laughs> Hi, I'm Dale Hildebrand. I'm a filmmaker from Toronto. Excellent. And your proof of concept, uh, could you explain that a little bit? Well, it's a little, it's, I thought, you know, Directors Guild of Canada selected eight directors to create a, each to make a two-minute script and make a two-minute film to be shot in the volume. And the volume is um, the same platform The Mandalorian was shot on, Star Trek is shot on. We had the art director from Star Trek uh, doing the art direction on it. And uh, so it's, it's a virtual wall with a physical practical set in the foreground, in the middle, and you've got to blend the two together. And the interesting thing about that is, it's, you know, the, the wall is all projected Unreal Engine imagery. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, in my case, it was a castle, a castle rampart to be exact. And uh, what, uh, what you have is you can play with the parallax of the camera moving past, through, over, above the foreground of the practical set to reveal the background. And your cameras, cameras are uh, connected with computers and uh, little like sort of radar spot detectors that, that follow the imagery and they high res exactly what is in your shot. So unlike shooting a green screen thing where your actors have nothing to interact with, they're just acting to the void of green. Yeah. Here they have things that reflect, refract off of their, their sunglasses or their clothing or their face and they can interact in the world they are actually acting in, which is brilliant for the performance, you know? Yeah. So that's what we had to play with. And there's a whole team of... You know, like, I don't know, 15 people running computers on the side there. Uh, you know, it's, 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 cr it's crazy. It's really tech. And it, it was probably my only chance ever to do something g Game of Thronesy. Is that a word? Uh, it's now a yeah, word. Yeah. <laughs> okay. it's, you know, so I thought, I got I to gotta jump at it. So, yeah, it was a great opportunity. Excellent. And now you said... Uh that you were, people were chosen to do this two-minute thing? Yeah. The, so the Directors Guild of Canada had this workshop, and people could learn about it and stuff like that. And, at, you know, at the time, not many pe directors especially have, have worked on the volume yet. And uh, so they, they opened it up for people to write a script, pitch it, and if you're selected, one of the eight, you get to do it. And fortunately, mine was one of them. And there was uh, seven other really wonderful directors. And we get together a lot. It, it's, it's interesting as a director, you, you work in your own silo a lot. You know what I mean? And you, you create and you give out assignments and you get feedback and you work with a as a team with your crew. But very seldom do you work with other directors. And so yeah. that was absolutely brilliant. And we're all so supportive of each other. It's great. That is very cool. So now when, when you're in that environment, what exactly do you have to put together? Because I know there's physical things as well as programmed. Yes. So when it comes to, like when you pitched your script and you said, here I am, we're standing in front of this castle. Do they then develop the castle programming for you, or is this something you have to come up with? Well, actually, they, they had originally four sets that we could choose from. One was the Arctic, one was this, that, and the, the other. And they finally settled on two of them because, practically, we had two days to shoot this. And my, my little film, you'll see, two minutes long, shot in the volume. I had, under two, I had two hours to shoot this film. That's it. That's the amount of time I had allotted oh, wow. to me to shoot it out. So you got to have it storyboarded. You got to have it planned out. You got to know. And you're also doing French reverses because your, your wall is also going to be your, your turnaround background sort of thing. So you got to also plan your visuals that will take place there, your practical set that has to suddenly rotate, through, you know, 180 degrees, right? So the planning of, is, of it was several weeks in a sense, but really one solid week. So we broke it down to two, two sets. One day we would shoot castles. For four directors got to shoot on a castle and each, each story is completely different. Different lighting, different story, different mood, different everything, you know what I mean? And then the next day was uh, uh, the park of, of Paris. One director, uh, Sid from, from Hamilton, he's, he did this brilliant black and white horror film, whereas other directors did these brilliant 
beautiful stories that, that, that touch the heart. You know, it's completely different, you know? So we each had two hours to shoot out this little movie of ours, right? And so the planning of it, you had to, um, you had to work out your, your, what, what you wanted. And, and for me, I wanted to go through the credits, you know, the, the sort of like rectangular shapes of a castle, you know, you have, the, and I wanted one guy's face peering through it. Okay. But the problem is we couldn't get that particular union to join up with us to build those damn things. So I did a pile of rubble. My, my pile of garbage <laughs> became my crennels that I could, because I wanted to do almost like a poor man's, um, 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 like a uh, Luma Crane, not the Luma Crane. Anyways, I, I wanted oh, to do... Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, I wanted to do a move in. So I, I got a, a, a crane, but it's all manual, and we moved in and revealed, uh, and, and the guy, you know, stepped into the crenel or into the thing. So we moved through the garbage <laughs> to reveal our world of the castle and the fires, you know. So there's, there's one practical flame, and the rest are all artificial, and you won't tell which is which. No, I guarantee you, because I, yeah, I didn't realize they all weren't real. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. so have you ever, you've, obviously you've never worked in this kind of environment before. What, uh, what kind of things did you usually work with before? I, I work in documentaries, feature films. Uh, I work as a director, producer, writer, and, and a DP. So I'm, I'm sort of all over the place. I just love to create. And um, I just finished a feature film that we shot in Sicily. And it's uh, uh, Samuel Goldwyn is, is picking it up right now, so we'll be releasing that. And so, and I'm about to shoot a documentary in the new year about a Mennonite immigration in 1874 from uh, uh, Imperial Russia to the West. Uh, it's sort of like a Ken Burns style, ramped up because okay. I'm going to use Unreal Engine to create some imagery and stuff of like that. And then I have um, three pictures I'm going to be DPing in the in the spring to the summer so sort of this thing. is a big jump from documentary to you know ramparts and castles and <laughs> how did that jump happen just just because this opportunity well because of the opportunity i also direct a lot of drama as well you know oh, okay. so there is that option and or uh, that you know sort of history uh you know they saw my reels and stuff of like that and you know but yeah i guess end of the day they just wanted you know a good little script that they selected and then hopefully you know eight directors that could execute and deliver and, and they all did and show the potential of working in this definite environment yeah 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 that's good yeah so now which would you prefer if you only had to pick one or the other documentaries or uh film? you know i've had that question asked of me many times um, i like them all i just I, whatever it is as long as i can create um it, it, it's and the more creative it's and also if i jump over to when i'm dping i like Stuff that challenges me, like, you know, horrors or thrillers. You can do so many crazy camera moves and lighting effects and all that sort of stuff. I love playing. Well, the reason I ask, too, is because when you have your film, you have a structure and this is your story. But when you get into documentaries, they, they take on a life of their own. So a lot of the time, you may not know when you're done. You, you know, that's a really interesting point because historically, all my documentaries have been exactly that. I did a Baraka Koinesquatsky type of film years ago, and it's just just visuals. That's all it is to music, and we did have some some dialogue in there, but still, it was it was all that visual orgasmic stuff, you know, and you don't know what you're creating until you're in the edit room and months and years or centuries later exactly. sort of thing. But the documentary I'm about to do, I mentioned is sort of a Ken Burns style. I've never done one this way. And it's almost all in a sense scripted because so much of this is, is okay. narrated and so much is historical fact, you know? So it's a very different way, and I've never done docs like that. So I'm, oh. I'm kind of interested in it. You I know? see what you're saying. Yeah, because usually with a documentary, you're, you're filming what's going on presently. That's and, right. But history, yeah, that is it's true. It's a historical one. Yeah, you're scripting everything out. You're researching. You're trying to find photos. I'm, we're creating photos <laughs> on you know, AI platforms, whatever it might be. But it's, it's, uh, 
it's a really different way of doing it, and it's kind of exciting, you know? It's like a mix between the two. It is. It is. And, and then I go out and interview a bunch of people, and then i got to blend them in, because first I make the script to make sure I hit all the beats. You yeah. know what I mean? And then I, I say in there to the readers that are reading the script that a lot of this content will be taken over by people that we interview. The interviewees will cover some of the content. So, and you never know the life that that takes on. Exactly. Because I know I've, I've only ever done one documentary, and that was the same thing. I was going in with one, one idea, and by the time I got done the first two interviews, it was a completely <laughs> different story. Yeah. So do you worry about that in this historical setting? Uh, sure. I always, there's always a reason to worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, yeah. You know, I, I, f- I find this a problem-solving business. And he or she who solves the most problems wins, you know? Yes. And that's all we have to do. We will continue to, you know, problems will re- arise. I have a cr- great team that works with me, and they make me shine. So that's all I, you know, I, I really, I do nothing. I just sit there and, you know, let them do everything, make me look good, you know? Perfect. <laughs> so, um... With with this uh, festival run, are, yeah. are you presenting it across like different festivals, or is this strictly just something local? Um, I, I we've done a few uh, festivals. Uh, you know, we had one in London, in Eng- England, uh, uh, two of them there. Um, Ooh, and that's but, the place to to go for castles. Yeah, for castles. That, that, <laughs> oh, they chose me just because of the bloody castle. I'm sure of it. You know. <laughs> Um, but you know, we did uh, Hamilton. We did it as a group. All eight directors showed the films back to back, and we we discussed w- all working on the volume together, which was kind of interesting. Now that would be very cool. Yeah, there'd be a lot of information there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It. it I think it's a, a worthwhile thing for people to uh, you know just observe and and learn from because uh, you know we all learn from each other. It's great. Now, having done all the previous film work and now working in this little bottle environment, which would you consider better? You know, all have their, their opportunities and challenges. Uh, and I love the challenges and I love the opportunities. There's nothing like shooting on set or on loca- location or, you know, I, I've, I've filmed in Afghanistan where I was embedded behind enemy lines and I flew on Chinooks filming live extractions of CIA operatives. I mean, you can't get more adrenaline rushy. Is that a word as well? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> than now that. a new word too. You know, I mean, it was like everything was brighter. Everything is cranked up to 11, you know? And uh, so, you know, shooting in Africa, shooting in Asia, I mean, all of these are brilliant. At the same time, you know, you go in a volume and I want to shoot a a sunset sequence, a magic hour sequence in Morocco. I can shoot that for five days straight if I want. And you it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about gold no! anymore. <laughs> yeah. it's, you, the world is your oyster, so shuck it, you know? <laughs> that is excellent. Yeah. Well, congratulations on your film. Thank uh, you. It does look stunning. Thank so, you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you ever want to pop back on the show, please let us know because we're always happy to have people back on. All right, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Join us next time for Blood in the Snow Radio. Bits Radio is a production of Three Evil Cats Productions in association with the Blood in the Snow Canadian Film Festival. For more information and to listen to other episodes, visit bloodinthesnow.ca and tweet us at Bits Film Fest. Music by Jen Gorman, produced and edited by Kelly Michael Stewart.